Welcome to the Block Party. My name is Seth Kushner. Today, I am joined by a Block Party legend making his third appearance, tied with the great Phil Esposito for the most appearances all time, Ryan Callahan. Callie, how you doing, man? Good, man. It's good to hold that record, at least tied with uh, with Espo. It's good I'm, company. I'm hoping you break at some point this season. <laughs> Hopefully when the Bolts win the cup again, right? I'll come back on and we'll break it. You're damn right. So what's where are you right now? What's going on? I'm in uh, Stanford, Connecticut, uh, doing some work with NBC this week, uh, a couple of days. So just living the hotel life again and, you know, getting a chance to talk to you. So what's going on? So uh, NHL network stuff, NBC, I saw that you were doing some stuff with MSG. What, what are you doing? Are you all over the place these days? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I just, uh, to be honest with you, I'm just trying to give every network and every opportunity a chance, um, see how I like it, see how they like me. Um, you know, I started, as you know, last year doing the TV work a little bit, analysis work, and I've enjoyed it. So I'm um, continuing it this year and, and kind of just seeing where it goes. I'm not, uh, not putting too much pressure on it. And you know, I'm gone maybe once a week, every month, and it's not too bad travel wise. So it's, uh, it's been fun to do so far. What was it like when you were doing the MSG game? Uh, we're doing the Rangers game. Did you have, did you feel a lot of pressure when you were on there? No, it was good. It felt like I was back home, to be honest with you. I mean, with John Giannone there, which uh, I knew very well, obviously, from my time there. Steve Valquette was the co-host, and he was a former teammate of mine. And then kind of how their studio set up, I had uh, Joe Micheletti and uh, Sam right there next to me. So it's, uh, it was kind of like an old reunion, and I, I enjoyed it. I mean, uh, I know those guys so well. I kind of grew up with them, so... I really enjoyed going there and, and doing those couple games. Do you get that when you're doing the NHL Network stuff, NBC, all that? Do you get that camaraderie or at least close to it that you had when you were playing? Does it kind of give you a little bit of that? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, yeah, you know, your co-host and stuff you talk to and, and you get that little bit of camaraderie. But, I mean, if I'm going to be honest with you, there's nothing like going to battle with the guys, you know, in, in day in, day out, going through positives, negatives, um, you know, basically when you're on a team, you're, that's your family. You're, you're living with them at the hotel for, you know, nights on end. So you get it a little bit, but I, I do still miss that, uh, you know, being with the boys, uh, mentality. Are you ready to move back to Tampa yet? Is what do you miss most about Tampa? Yeah. I mean, I, I miss a lot. I'll be honest with you. It's, um, you know, from the weather, obviously my foundation, uh, work, we, we did so much there. Um, you know, there's a lot of things about Tampa I miss, but, I guess on the flip side of that, it's nice to be home with family. I mean, there's there's nothing like family. My uh, mom and dad, my wife's mom and dad, the kids got cousins there. So, um, you know, you can't beat family, but there's there's definitely times I, I wish I was in the sunshine and, and back in uh, Tampa. So talk to me about the Ryan Callahan Foundation. I know you have Callie's Comforts going on right now. I follow it on Instagram. You guys always have so much going on. What is Callie Comforts and what do you what are you up to these days? Yeah, so that's a new program we started. Um, and the reason we started it, to be honest with you, was, um, you know, through this pandemic, you know, it's hard to send these families on vacations and, um, you know, send them places they want to go, which is our 2-4 our club program. So we came up with Kelly's Com Comforts. Um, Jessica Neander, who is the wife of the Ray's GM, actually approached us and came up with this idea. Um, and wanted to launch it and, and we loved it. We thought it was a great idea. And what we do is we bring providers into these families' houses. So uh, get your hair done, your nails done, uh, massage, facials. Um, and so we bring them in and kind of give them just a, a day of comfort. You know, the, the kids, the parents, uh, we bring in dinner or lunch, depending on what time of day it is. Um, and it continues with our, our goal of, you know, family experiences outside of you know, treatment centers. And so far it's been great. We think we've done two families in Tampa. And now we've also just did our first family yesterday in Rochester, which was, which is awesome for me and my wife, just because we knew we wanted to bring part of our foundation back there, obviously still staying in Tampa, but um, being able to help the people that, you know, in a place where we grew up and obviously means so much to us, we were really proud yesterday to be able to help our first family there. And uh, it's grown. It's, it's, it's been good. We're, and we're enjoying it. And, you know, hopefully we, we still can have our events in Tampa once all this clears up, that's still the plan. And the psychedelic soiree will go on and everybody will enjoy themselves. And um, so we're, we're looking forward to it, to, to get back in Tampa and actually we're still doing work there, but to get our feet out in Tampa and, and see the families again, and um, hopefully have that event as soon as this all clears up. Kelly, are there any younger guys or any guys throughout the NHL or even when you were playing that that want advice on how to set up a foundation or how to kind of run a charity or how to donate? Because I'm sure a lot of guys don't even know how to get started with that. Yeah, I mean, I haven't had anybody directly reach out to me on how to start a foundation. Um, but 
I'll tell you what, it's not easy, you know, and luckily my agent, Steve Bartlett helped us out a ton to get our 501 C3, which I mean, to be honest, this was a complete nightmare paperwork wise, you know, and <laughs> You, know, you have this great idea and you want to help and you realize there's all this work behind it um logistical and he was great and he helped us but i mean the the guys in tampa were been unbelievable support of of me and, and still are i mean you know anthony sorelli donates a lot of stuff to us um you know charity your choice type of deal he always picks us tyler johnson always picks us um so you know i think every player has the you know, the appetite to give back and want to give back, um, you know, they just got to find a way to do it and in, in, in what avenue to do it and how they're comfortable doing it. And, um, you know, they've been very supportive and, um, you know, even guys around the league have been supportive of me with donations and things like that. So I think hockey players are uh, very, very kind souls and uh, always willing to give back. And, you know, we, we love doing it. It's been so fulfilling for me and my wife. You mentioned Sorelli, you mentioned uh, Tyler Johnson that always, you know, donates. Is there anybody that's not donating on the lightning right now that you'd like to chirp maybe? No, everybody's been good to me. I can't, uh, I can't, I can't single every, anybody out. Everybody's been really good to me, especially when we had our events there, everybody shows up and um, opens up their wallets and, and know how good of a cause it is. All right. So let's talk about the FaceTime call that you got from Steven Stamkos. Um, much like we talked about before, I can't read the articles on The Athletic. I don't have a password for it. So I don't know the story. I only know two lines of it. Please, what happened after the Stanley Cup? You got a call from Stammer at what, two, three in the morning? Yeah, it was it was early. Um, you know, and I got uh, woken up by a, a FaceTime call. I couldn't remember exactly what time it was, but um, it came through a stammer and, you know, they're all in the hospitality room partying still um, celebrating. And it, I'll be honest, it, it meant so much that, you know, stammer called me, obviously we're really close friends. We talk all the time, but, but still, I mean, they're enjoying their moment. I was no longer on the team and um, for him to call me and, you know, McDonough was there, Hedman was there, uh, you know, Coop grabbed the phone at one point. I talked to him, um, you know, so I talked to a lot of the guys that I was close with played with. Um, you know, so for them to think of me, it, it meant a lot. I mean, it, it meant everything. Obviously, I, was, I wish I was there with them, partying with them and, and enjoying that moment. But I mean, for them to take a little bit out of their night to say hello, um, you know, I was happy for them. And obviously, I sent a bunch of texts right after they won, not expecting a reply because I knew that they were doing. So it was good to be able to talk to them, too, and congratulate them. I mean, that was whew, what a run that was. I mean, it from the outside looking in, and I don't know how you felt, obviously, you know, you're a fan of the team, but um, I know the guys felt differently, but it wasn't even close. I mean, I, I looked at every series and I go, there's no way anybody is going to beat this team. I, like, you know, and I've been in those battles before and I know how close they actually feel those games, but kind of from the first time watching from afar, I was like, they're not going to get touched, you know? So it was, it was an impressive run. It kind of felt like to me, uh, you know, as a fan, we like to have all these, you know, narratives and all these storylines. And to me, it felt like they were, it was their year because of everything that had happened the year before with Columbus. I felt like that prepared them for this run. And yeah, looking back on it, I mean, I felt like maybe the Islanders played them the toughest throughout the whole series, but, are, you know, throughout the whole playoffs, but I felt like they really had their way throughout. So I totally yeah. agree. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And it's, uh, it was impressive to watch. I mean, you definitely, everybody was playing great. And then uh, obviously the story of Stamkos coming back and scoring that big goal. It was, uh, it was a special run for them. That's, that's for sure. So you said you're very close to Stamkos. Did you know that he was suiting up that night? Um, I, I did. Yeah. I, you know, I, I was talking to him throughout the playoffs on, on how he was doing, how he was coming back. Um, I knew he was, I knew he was close. Um, you know, and I spoke to him, you know, throughout that as he was coming back. So I, I knew that he was, uh, he was making his triumphant return and um, he buried the goal. So that was, uh, that was awesome. Did you shed a tear at all? I mean, what did you, what, 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 what goosebumps? Tell me, I talked to Ryan Malone on the block party last week and he said he was getting goosebumps just thinking about it. What was your reaction? Yeah. I mean, hundred percent, same thing. I mean, I just had a smile ear to ear thinking, you know, knowing what he went through. I went through a lot of it with him. You know, we, we spent so much time injured together um, in that trading room on the road together um, you know, so to, to see him score that goal, it just, uh, you know, you, you almost, you, you just so much pride for him, happiness. I mean, you know, you say it, that's what you felt for him. And, um, it was a cool moment, really, really cool moment. Ryan, can we just address the fans real quick? Cause Stammer obviously rehabbing right now he's injured. And I just think uh, a lot of people, way too many people, I think jump on this guy, call him injury prone, go, here we go again. Same old story with Stamkos. Is there anything you can tell these fans to help them understand, you know, that a guy's not injury prone, that there's fluke injuries or something because Bugsy Malone told me last week, 
people don't know how hard you have to work to get back from an injury. Not only that, but you have to work back to where you were before as one, one of the greatest players in the NHL. So how can you help these fans understand that it's just the injuries, just guys don't want to get injured. Yeah, it's, it's bad luck. And I'll tell you what, he's had a string of it. I mean, I had some of it in my career and um, you know, it's, it, you're right. It's not like his body's set up to get injured. It, he's had a string of bad luck. I mean, it, looking back to he slid into the post and broke his leg. He had to get the rod in his leg. I mean, that play doesn't happen. He doesn't miss that time, you know? So it's not like his leg was predisposed to get injured. It just happened to be a fluke play. He goes into the post, um, you know, and obviously everybody knows what went on with the blood clot. Um, so it's, it's tough to explain to fans. I think that aspect of it, but you know, what impresses me the most about stammer is, as you said, how hard he works to come back. You know, in a lot of people after dealing with so many injuries and rightfully so you'd get down, right. You'd get discouraged. You get down. Um, you'd have every doubt in your mind that I might not be able to come back from this one. But, you know, while I was with him through all those rehabs, I didn't see that once in him. you know, and, and when I had my second hip surgery, that stuff started creeping in my head. Like, you know, maybe this is it, you know, this is obviously some bad luck, but, but he, he just kept going. He'd show up to the rink every day. He'd rehab do everything he could to get back on the ice and, and to get back playing. And um, as you Bugsy said, it's not only is he coming back playing, but he's getting back to that elite level. You know, he's not just part of it. And this year is a great example of this. He's had an unbelievable year this year, putting the puck in the net, you know, doing everything that Stammer does after all these injuries. Um, it's a testament to, to how hard he works to get back and how much pride he takes in, in playing well and, and being Steven Stamkos. Thank you for explaining that. Callie, was it weird to see 24 out on the ice last year during the Stanley Cup playoffs so when Bogosian was rocking it? I, I felt like it was odd. I kept thinking it was you. I felt like it was a little too soon. What do you think seeing it out there? It did. I mean, a couple of times you almost thought like I was watching video, right? You see 24 and you <laughs> go back to your playing days. I'm so used to seeing 24 when we were going over video clips, you know, bad clips, good clips, whatever they were. But um but yeah, it's, uh, it was a little weird at first, and, and then I and then I got used to it. But uh, I know Bogosian and good dude. So if I had to pick somebody to wear twenty four, it's uh, he's a good guy to do it. Kelly, going back to the call that you got at two or three in the morning from Stammer, do you always sleep with your ringer on? Did he call you over and over again? Were you just kind of a light sleeper? No, it's, it was it was early in the morning. I was just uh, I was just getting up, so it was you know obviously I have young kids and they pop up early, so it uh, it's probably around five o'clock, and I was starting to get unsettled and. Um, I look over and there, Steven Stamkos FaceTime. So I said, I better grab this one. Man, ran down, a- ran downstairs. So I didn't wake the wife up and I'm sure she heard me in the kitchen yelling and screaming at the guys, but, uh, but yeah, she's okay with that. What, what'd you think about the boat party when you saw that? I didn't even know boat parties existed. I'm sure you didn't either. What, uh, how badly did you want to be in there with those guys? Yeah, extreme jealousy is that that's, that's what I felt on that one. Holy cow. How fun did that look? I mean, just, uh, Tampa did it right. There's no question. I don't think there's any going to be any parade now. Just going to be all boat parties, right? <laughs> That's, oh yeah, for sure. For sure. And obviously the Bucks did it. They got Brady throwing the trophy in between boats. Um, you know, then he had Kaloran on the jet skis and holy cow. It's uh, I'm glad I wasn't there. I don't know if I would have survived that one, to be honest with you. <laughs> they might've been at the bottom of the bay at the end of that one. <laughs> Kelly, I saw you tweeted the other day where I know that you had some superstitions when you lived in New York, you and G would talk about it, but I didn't know this was one of them. You never would hang pictures in your apartment. I didn't. Um, I don't know. And I was reading the tweet that uh, I didn't know who it was sent it out there it was the NHL retweeted it or something that uh, Mantha was building a new house or whatever. And it just brought back memories of me. And I'm like, you know what? I remember in New York, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let my wife hang any family pictures on the walls um, just because I, I felt like it was going to make you feel like you're at home and then you're going to get traded, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're not there anymore. And then also it would give me a comfort level like I've made it. And I, you know, this is my home. This is where I am. And almost let me take a deep breath and lose my edge, as I said in the tweet. So uh, looking back, it's <laughs> it's kind of crazy and wild, like, you know, good for my wife to, to go with it. But um but yeah, I, I mean, I guess I had some issues, but it worked out. <laughs> you know, looking back, I'm just like, what's wrong with me? But, um, but it whatever works, right? Kept me in the league. If anything else that you would, anything else that you did back in the day that you would think would help, you know, would lose your edge that you had to like stay away from, or you put your poor family through, or just that, you know, not getting settled in a home was it? Yeah, I think that was, you know, and it's funny because I would have never, if someone asked me that previously, I would have never brought up that story and thought about it. Just seeing that tweet kind of, you know, registered my memory of, I used to do that. So I'm sure there's other ones that 
subconsciously, I don't even think about that, uh, you know, someone brought up or, you know, it made me think of it. I'd be like, there's another one, you know? (laughs) So. Kelly, tell me, what do you think is one of the most overrated stats in hockey right now? Or maybe just when you were playing or something that, that maybe is a stat that you don't even think people should pay attention to. Um, I'm not a huge fan of analytics. I think maybe just as it probably got me out of the league, but (laughs) (laughs) Um, but no, I, I mean, if you're looking at a stat that I don't pay much attention to, or I don't, it's plus minus, you know, I don't think that's a tell all, um, of how a guy's doing or how he's playing offensively or defensively. Um, there's too many variables that go into that. I mean, you can be completely not even in a play, you know, and get a minus an empty netter and get a minus. Um, so yeah, that's, if I had to pick out one stat, I'd probably say that, uh, that M- or plus minuses are something you probably shouldn't pay attention to. That, that seems to be the right answer. I feel like if you've got a good plus minus, then it's okay. And if it's bad, then you don't pay attention to it. There you go. It's like a quarterback, right? Yeah. <laughs> Interception, it didn't happen. You just completely forget about it. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Uh, Callie, I want to know, um, could you just tell me uh, what it meant to be an Ottawa Senator? Everything. Um, it meant <laughs> a- <laughs> oh man. The, uh, the 20 minutes I spent in Ottawa for my, for my doctor's appointment, um, it was the best 20 minutes I've ever spent in the NHL. Um, they ever send you any gear or anything, Kelly? Did you I got nothing. Any- I didn't even get a Jersey, you know, crazy. All right. Taking a hat. I didn't get it. You know, it's a funny story actually talking about Ottawa. Um, so obviously I accepted the trade. I went to Ottawa and then my dad comes over the first time he comes to my house, he's wearing an Ottawa Senators hat, just a bus ball. <laughs> <laughs> he went and bought it just for that. He went and bought it, got it online or never ordered it. He came over and he was, my dad was rocking his Ottawa Senators hat. I'm like, oh man, he still wears it every once in a while too. It's funny. So, so he was trolling you. So he knew that you were done. He just wanted to kind of show up and at least support you. hundred percent. Yeah. And came in. He's like, I like my new hat. So yeah, man. he was trolling me. What a guy, what a guy. That's what you like to see out of the family. Callie, yeah. listen, man, I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time as always, dude. It's great catching up with you. Amazing things you're doing with the foundation. If people want to donate, help out, is there any way that they can get involved? Yeah, ryancallahanfoundation.org. Go find out, read more about the foundation, all the information, pictures of what we do. You can donate on there. Um, But yeah, thank you. I mean, you know, I'd like to just thank everybody for their support. Um, I mean, obviously most of your viewership's in Tampa. So thank you so much for all your support. Um, Foundation couldn't have got started without you. Couldn't keep rolling without you. I'm excited to get back there, have our event, um, you know, continue great things and helping kids and families in Tampa. So good stuff. You still feel like you're going to get 100% support um, from all the guys, like when you were playing. I know that all the guys showed up to your event. Do you feel still feel like you're going to get that? Because if not, you know, we can go in there and do some heavy hitting. Yeah, I'm going to have to be a strong arm a couple of them if they're not helping anymore. But, uh, I mean, hopefully they come. You know, if not, me and you are going to go in there and uh, bash some heads, right? You're damn right we are. <laughs> <laughs> Callie, thanks a lot, man. Great having you on, dude. Awesome stuff. Thanks for having me. Talk soon.